Welcome to another edition of the Mailbag. I think the last one of these I did was in like February. <laughs> it's been a little while. Um, you may have noticed things have gotten kind of hectic in the crisis in the church and covering the news of the church. And unfortunately, it can't really be helped. I mean, I, this week I've already done, well, this will be the ninth video on this channel this week. So, you know, yeah, it's been hard. So here's, I'm going to try to keep this relatively short. Um, my past mailbag videos have been involving, you know, me showing all the mail I got and books and things. I'm not going to do a lot of that this time. I just have really only one question that was submitted to me for the last mail, for the mailbag video that should have been made several months ago. And I'm going to make a few announcements here. So they're going to be after the questions and then we'll talk about Then I'll talk to you about my personal announcements, including a second channel I started and some other stuff. So Let's get to the question, and that's from a listener named Jeannie who asks that they're interested in knowing exactly what changed in the ordination of priests and the sacraments after Vatican II. Some traditionalists do not believe that Novus Ordo priests are validly ordained, but they're curious as to why. And it's important to them to know because we need more traditional Latin Mass priests, and it would be great if more Novus Ordo priests were inspired to quote-unquote return to tradition, so to speak. Okay, so let's begin here. Most traditionalists don't doubt the ordinations of post-conciliar priests. Let's be clear about that. That's most of them don't doubt the ordinations of them. Some do, but they're usually either set of a contest or associated with the with uh, groups like the SSPX resistance who broke off from the SSPX because they thought the SSPX had gotten too cozy with Rome. Now, the ma mainline SSPX website itself says that, you know, actually has a pretty long detailed, you know, reasoning behind why they don't deny the ordinations that they only reconfer or re, or, uh, reordain people like priests who come in from the mainline Novus Ordo Church and say if they have valid reason to believe that they don't, that their ordination was invalid for some reason. Um, to simply put, the rite of ordination had some minor changes to verbiage. Clearly, the intent is the same when you put them side by side as one group, one article that I'll put in the pinned comment here if you rem remind me to put it in the pinned comment if, I, if you don't see it there, okay, in case I forget. But the, the article I'm talking about here, and I'm going to put both the SSPX one and the other, the, this one here in the pinned comment, but that article was written by somebody who refers to traditional Catholics as rad trads. So they're not exactly, you know, people who are going to like what I do, what most of us do, what most of us believe, and our assessment of the state of the crisis of the church. But their argument is generally not wrong. When you put the text side by side, the verbiage changes are minimal. And when you read them, the translations into English, the intent of the new rite is the same as the pre-conciliar form. However, I do plan to do a individual video, a Saturday type video, you know, educational kind of video on how the ordination or how the sacraments were changed after the council, because every single one of them was. And I plan to go through the arguments on both sides of it. It's just, it's an enormous topic. I mean, Father Chikata, uh, the late Father Chikata of uh, the SSPV wrote what is widely considered the absolute best book on the or the changes to the mass, right? And it's I mean there are people who are not set of a contest like he was who clearly admit that that book is the best book on the origins of the new mass and it's enormous. I've recommended it before. Speaking of books, I guess we'll go to the first of the announcements here. The first announcement is that I found. As requested by listeners, I put together a crisis in the church reading list that should also be linked in the pinned comment. It is available on my uh, sources blog at returntotradition.org. It will be literally the first and maybe eventually only post on that blog that I actually bookmark so I can easily find it because it's a work in progress as these things kind of be. But it's a list of books, recommended reading for uh, uh, different books to read to understand the crisis in the church broken up by reading level. And that was recommended by patrons. So there's sort of an entry or beginner level. There's an intermediary level and an advanced level. That way, if you are have, you know, if you can read the New York times, fine, you'll be fine with the, you know, the entry level and some of the media, the intermediate level stuff, but the advanced stuff, you're getting close to theology, you know? So there's some books you'll see on that list that are to be expected and others that might surprise you. So, Check that out if you would, please. The Crisis in the Church reading list is something that my patrons have had access to for the last month. Um, anyway, so I'll 
that one question about the ordination was the only question I really got that I could at least find for th this video that was supposed to be done months ago. So I'm going to give you a couple others that I just see frequently in comments. One, why am I not on board with the idea that Benedict is the true Pope? Because one, I'm not convinced by the argument that's made. And yes, I've seen the arguments from all the figures you're, you'll probably try to respond to me with saying, did you read this person's thing or this person's thing? Did you watch these videos by this person? Yes, I have. And I'm not convinced. I think it's a lot of legalese. And we're talking about a supernatural institution here. There are other options besides Benedict is the Pope or Francis is the Pope. There are other options, including that Benedict actually resigned no matter what is it, what, what he tried to do. And that Francis is was either canonically elevated to the uncanonically elevated to the papacy, meaning where they state where the papacy is vacant, which is separate from sede vacantism, which is a very specific set of options. To we are being punished for our own sinfulness with a wicked shepherd. That is a legitimate option. After all, let's be real, the vast majority of Catholics, I'll put myself in there too are in many ways indistinguishable in our sinfulness from the secular world. We need to repent. We get, it, we get the Pope and the bishops that we deserve. So that's why I'm not really all that convinced. Besides, I have a video on Monday where I'm going to talk to you about the Kazakhstan stuff that Francis did. And I'm just going to demonstrate how he is in almost perfect keeping with Benedict on a lot of the most wicked stuff that he does when it comes to selling the church out to the secular world with quotations from John Paul II and Benedict XVI's own papal writings. So watch for that Monday morning, in case you don't believe me. Question two I get all the time in emails and all the time in posts is, the flag behind me is called a Sacre Cour flag. And I probably mispronounced that. I can't pronounce French anyway. I can't pronounce English barely, let alone foreign languages. It comes from a battle between French Catholics and what was once called New France, the Quebec, and the British. It's a symbol commonly seen among Catholics involved in resisting modernism. I'm not French. I'm not. I don't have any connection to Quebec. I may have to replace the flag, though, because some of our secular adversaries call it a symbol of evil wrong think, you know, the kind of speech that is mean and nasty and has the word hate attached to it. I may eventually go to a cheesy green screen and incorporate that flag with some iconic Irish battle flag from the American War between the states because if you don't know anything about the Irish rule, it was brutal, it was, it was unjust, and they were amazing warriors in that conflict. Regardless of whatever you think about the conflict overall, they were amazing, their role in it was amazing. And I may incorporate that with that flag and find some other iconic ones, maybe a Cristero flag or something, I don't know. But for those who want to know where I got it from, the Tumblr House YouTube channel web store. That's where I got mine from. Somebody told me they looked recently and they didn't have one. Check again. Um, that's, you know, Charles Colomb and Vincent Franchini's uh, weekly podcast. I watch the show. I'm a patron of them. I like it. Go check out their web store. Buy it from them because I'm not going to put it up. And before I get to the announcements, speaking of merchandise, I do want to know. I have been asked by people to offer some channel related merchandise. If I were to do that, I wouldn't put up any Belloc merchandise, you know, Hillary Belloc with the sunglasses. I just wouldn't do that, I don't think. But would anyone actually be interested in that? I, it's a lot of work to do, and I'm hesitant because it's tricky to offer things people want without crossing the line of just banking on the crisis in the church. I have a few ideas for things that would be inoffensive, and it's perfectly fine to sell images of our Lord and Our Lady, but I'm still hesitant to do that myself. Well, let me know if you're interested. I, got, I have some unique ideas, including uh, making shirts based off some of the goofy things Francis has said about us. But there will not be coffee mugs, at least I don't think so. Because right now I'm of the mind that the world doesn't need more YouTuber coffee mugs. But if you disagree and you'd want one, let me know. All right, so the first announcement is small. I'm going to have to change the time I make videos go live. Recently, YouTube changed how they send video recommendations out to people. And my traditional going live in the wee hours of the morning, 2.15 a.m. Central Standard Time, is, is just killing me here. It's just not working. I noticed it with as it not being a lack of interest from people because most of my metrics were good it was just that when i would do a second video of the day on a topic that could have easily just waited till the next day and was no more like you know eye-catching headline or title than other things it nine times out of ten when i've done them over the past few months they have done orders of magnitude better than the video that day and so i'm probably gonna have to just instead of letting go live at 2 15 in the morning central stand probably like four or five in the morning 
fact, this morning's papal writing, which you should go watch if you haven't, and given how those videos perform, they probably didn't, go watch that video because it's from Pope Innocent III, and it's another one of his great insights into that, or great documents that gives insight to the crisis in the church today. But we'll see how things go with me, uh, you know, changing the, the upload time. So that'll only affect you if you're in Europe or you work a night shift, I think. The second announcement is that I started a second channel about zero carb carnivore and ketogenic dieting. It is not a Catholic topic channel, to be clear. It's supposed to be more broadly focused than that. And if you're into that kind of thing or curious about carnivore diets and ketogenic diets and food politics, because when I start, I have a PhD in public policy and I started that on the idea of talking about the American food system, which was so totally, obviously so totally broken that I wanted to take it from a sustainable development angle because when I started, I didn't see a problem really with that, except that a lot of people's words didn't match the policies they were promoting. And then I, you know, actually went knee deep or really neck deep into the documents. And that is what changed me. That was part of it. The other part was I was trying to do it from a Catholic angle. And when I read Laudato Si, followed by Pope Francis or Pope uh, Leo XIII's um, Rerum Navarum and other things and other preconciliar documents, that's when I really saw that there was a problem in the church with how it was interacting with the world. But that other channel is not explicitly a Catholic channel. You know, I talk about, you know, the attempt to get forced people to eat insects and, uh, you know, the push for plant based diets on people and tips on how to do a carnivore and keto diet properly from experience because. One of the reasons I went on camera is since Christmas of 2020, I lost 150 pounds. So one of the credentials for talking about nutrition, that's my credential. I'm in the best health I've been in my adult life. So anyway, if you want to know that, that will also be in the pinned comment, will be a link to that channel. Um, the third and the biggest announcement is my wife is pregnant. We're expecting child number three. She's first trimester, we don't know what we're having beyond that we're having a single child, which is good. <laughs> For my stress, it's good. Although if there was more than one, we would be overjoyed. So child number three is on the way. And for that reason, I want to thank the people who, despite the economy being bad, who have stuck around as patrons. It's a, everybody on Patreon right now is suffering. It's, and it's because everybody in the culture is suffering. Everybody in the Western world is suffering because of the boneheaded decisions of our leaders. Trust me, I just paid my power bill. I get it. I don't hold it against anybody who had to drop. Totally understand. But uh, thank you to those who have stuck around. It is greatly appreciated. Um, so for the re for everyone else, I would appreciate your prayers in this time. Child number three. <laughs> uh, for those who are curious, my wife and I have been married uh, five years. So this is child three and five years. And yeah, um, nervous, but happily nervous. You know, those of you par parents of, you know, parents who've been parents longer than I have, can understand why I say that. Those are the big announcements. That's the big announcement. Um, so again, check those articles in the pinned comment if you're interested about the ordinations thing. If you're interested in the uh, carnivore keto channel that I have, it's also in the pinned comment, as is the crisis in the church reading list. Anyway, let me know uh, what you thought about all this. And uh, thanks for your support and thanks for watching today. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.